Hey gang, AV here and welcome to my review for the Boss Fight Studio Vitruvian Hacks Series 2 Orc Conqueror, the Savage Warrior. Here he is in the packaging. As you can see, it's a uh, it's a carded figure. It's in a collector-friendly packaging, which means that it's basically just held on by these plastic uh, flaps, which you can bend out of the way to slide the figure out and so on and so forth. Um, just be sure that it, it actually does include all the ex all the appropriate accessories because you can remove the figure and then put them back on the card. So you want to make sure that nothing's missing when you purchase them. Um, I have run into uh, uh, the situation where one or two of the items have been missing before. So just be on the just be on the lookout for that when you do purchase these things. Um, in case you're curious, HAX is Nanogram, which stands for Highly Articulated Character Kit System. So these figures, you can pop the arms off, the legs, the feet, interchange them with other figures, remove the head, so on and so forth, to really kit bash the heck out of these things. Uh, also, the same goes for their armor and various bits of accessories. So you can really, really customize to your heart's content with these things. Very, very fun to do. I've I've done it quite a bit myself. So anyhow, this is the front of the box. Um, he is an orc conqueror, a savage warrior, as you can see there. Very nice original artwork on the card, which I am a big fan of. Um, here's the bubble. You can see the figure and the vast majority of his, his accessories in there. He's got multiple different helmets and whatnot, which we'll have a look at. He also has a second tray in the back which you can barely see has a bunch of other accessories as well. Flip over the card, and here he is on the back. You can see he's got a file card, very similar to the G.I. Joe figures of old, roughly about the same size, with some text to, to flesh out the character and, and give him some backstory, which I'll allow you to read right now if you pause the video and do so. Very cool, very nice touch. I really like the fact that this line does that. Um, and uh, also in a, in a format that allows you to clip and save them just like you would a file card from a G.I. Joe. Very cool. Um, here are the first two waves of this particular series of figures. The Series 2 line is fantasy-based. I do have all of these figures, and I will be reviewing them uh, throughout the next few weeks, so be sure to have a look, be on the lookout for any of these. Um, this is a QR code which will take you to their store. Feel free to use it if you wish. And without further ado, let's get them out of the package. I typically just bend this one flap there, slide the card out, and Remove the figure trays from the card like that. Put that off to the side. All right. Now, as usual, we'll have a look at the accessories first. Have a look at what's in this bag. Two bags, actually. What is that? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I know what they are. Very tightly, uh, tightly taped up in here. Um, bear in mind that these are the these bags are taped closed um, with a very like non forgiving tape. It's very easy to stretch the tape or rip the plastic when you're trying to remove these things. Um, so don't think that it's going to be a piece of cake to open these things up remove them, and then put them back exactly as they were. Um, in my experience, it's a lot easier said than done. Uh, for example, this bag, I can't even get the tape off. I'm going to have to cut this open. And these are tiny little thigh armor pieces. There's the peg on the back, 
and there's the spiked detail on the front. These will peg onto his thighs, and I'll demonstrate that once I get the figure out of the packaging. We're just going to put them back in that tray so I don't lose them. But yeah, uh, these figures, even though they are in collector-friendly packaging, replacing them exactly as they first were released is a lot easier said than done. So keep that in mind before you decide to open yours. If you are a mint-on-card collector, um, you may not want to open them. All right, so he does come with a figure stand, as you can see. It's a standard figure stand for the figures in this line. Uh, it comes with two foot pegs. It's in the shape of their logo. It works. I like it. Um, here is a helmet, which you can wear, obviously. Um, it has two peg holes on either side, and this is to facilitate the different... Um, visors that he comes with he comes with two different visors it looks like with peg holes on either side Ooh, i'm sorry a few peg holes on either side beautiful detail molded in them this is a skull without a beard and a hell of a crest on the top and the other one is a skull with a beard And it takes a little effort sometimes to get these pegs through these two holes. Um, usually, in my experience, you got to heat it up with a, with a hair dryer or some boiling water. Um, obviously, I don't have either one of them handy during making the view, but take my word for it. Uh, you want to heat these up to get them on, and once they're on, they, they work pretty fluidly. They flip up and down, fits securely on the figure's head. Um, his eyes do actually show up through the eye holes, which is awesome. And something which a lot of toys don't do these days. So the fact they actually made sure that mechanically it would work, um, I'm a big fan of. So there's that. Um, this is a fur cape, which I will demonstrate once I get the figure out. Basically, you put these through uh, his armor piece peg holes and it will drape on his cape onto his back I mean excuse me he comes with two sets of grasping hands as I've mentioned before in other boss fight videos uh, the set on the figure um, bend up and down the extra set bend out and in uh, this is to allow you to pose the figure with whatever weapons they come with however you wish to pose them and make it look that much more believable. Big fan of the fact that they include both of these. The attention to detail of the fact that they actually do that is really nice. Um, here is his Warhammer, which is one of my favorite accessories of his. As you can see, it is basically a log <laughs> with a stake hammer through it and two iron spikes on either side the detail on it is awesome i mean it looks like a log and the the base of it too is a spike and and some nice detail on it i wouldn't want to get hit with this i'll be honest great accessory though um he has a sword, which looks like it was just made from a piece of slate or something like that. With a crude uh, leather wrapped handle. Definitely looks like something an orc would use. Very cool accessory. And he comes with a wooden sword, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, a wooden shield. Uh, there we are. Wooden shield has some excellent detail front and back. Even has the uh, a hollowed out area in the middle for the figure's hand to go, just like uh, a real shield with a, I believe that's called a buttress would do. 
Um, it has these two raised hoops here. That's so that you can actually string uh, a, a string through there so that you can drape this over the figure's back if you so choose. Really nice. I like that. Um, I think I have off to the side here one of my figures that actually has some arrows. And one thing I have noticed, uh, this did not come with this figure, just to be clear, um, is that these gaps in the shield, um, you can actually kind of wedge the arrows into. So when you're displaying the figure, you can actually have a few arrows sticking out of the shield as though he's been fired upon. Again, these did not come with the figure. These come with, like, the elves and uh, some of the accessory sets. So if you're interested in picking up some arrows, you should. But they work great with this particular shield, as I just demonstrated. All right, so stick that back in there. Uh, here he has another helmet. This is his... This helmet, in my opinion, was very clearly... Uh, Inspired by the Dungeons and Dragons character War Duke, um, very very cool looking helmet. And believe it or not, these spikes are actually sharp. Um, not enough to break the skin, at least with with modest pressure. But I wouldn't want to step on this. <laughs> uh, this is uh, very nicely detailed, though. Beautiful helmet. And we're close enough along in the farther enough in the, along in the video. Take the figure out of the tray. And demonstrate how he looks with the helmet on. It fits pretty snugly on his head, mostly because of his pointy ears. Ah. There we are. And as you can see, fits nicely. His eyes show up right where they're supposed to. You can still see his mouth through there. This is a very cool helmet for the orcs in particular. I really like the fit on them. All right. Now let's have a quick look at the figure himself, and then I'll show you... Well, let me show you... While I'm looking at his head, let me show you his other head sculpt. So you have two different likenesses for the figure. Um, with the number of heads... With the both heads, uh, like the, the three different helmeted head looks that you can give them with the visors, uh, the different accessories, they really went out of their way to make sure that you could army build these guys if you want to. And I really do enjoy that um, aspect of this figure. Uh, because of that, I've actually bought a couple. And when I do finally get the room to display them, they, uh, they're all going to look different on the shelf and it's going to look great. But anyhow, let's have a quick look at the figure himself before I waste more time jabbering. These uh, boot cuffs, these are actually separate pieces. You can take them off. Well, most of these parts you can kit bash. Like, you can pop his arm off because it is part of the hack system. And they just pop right back in if you wanted to actually use, like, this chest piece, this armor piece, if you, for, like, a a Caucasian or uh, or even an elf or something you could same with these gauntlets you can take these off too all separate pieces Very nice. Oh, and uh, here are the uh, peg holes I mentioned earlier. This is where the uh, those little armor pieces tab in. Uh, they just fit in with friction, um, but they fit in pretty securely. Once they're in there, uh, I haven't had any issues with them falling out. Pretty good. All right, let's go on to his articulation. So his head is on a barbell peg. So he gets a good range of motion up, up at his neck. If I can get it back onto his neck. There we are. He can rock. He can look up and down as well as rock back and forth. 
angle from side to side. You can do a full 360. Good range of motion up there. His arms are not hindered by his armor at all, as you can see. Full 360. Can go up really high. Um, nothing at the bicep. Um, elbows 90 degrees up and almost down. Can do a full 360 at the elbow as well. Wrists, as I've mentioned before, they can do a full 360. And as I've mentioned before, uh, these particular ones tilt up and down. The extra set of hands go in and out. So you have both options there. Um, he does have an ab crunch, which is on a ball joint, and it gives a good range of motion there. His hips do turn, but are hindered by his belt. As I've demonstrated in other videos, though, you can remove the belt and then twist the thing if you so desire. It's possible. There we go. Uh, his hips go out about that far. He can do the can-can about like that. His double-jointed knees which go back about that far. His ankles do a full 360. Can angle up and back. Very good articulation on these guys. Now, I did forget some of his accessories, which I'm going to get to just now. Um, you want to move these straps out of the way for his chest piece. And that is a separate piece, mind you. Um, and then you want to get these spiked shoulder pads. If you look on the inside, they are stamped with an R and an L. So this goes on his right side. And they will... They will fit in either side, but I do find that matching them up works better because they are angled more forward and they look less, uh, they look much better when you put them on the correct side. Let's put it that way. And that's my opinion. It could be me just being OCD about it, but hey. And here is his cape, which I showed off earlier. So we're going to demonstrate that now. As I said, you just take his shoulder pieces and lace them through those hoops. There you are. Okay, now this is his right side. This is his left side. This gets bent down. It's a lot easier to do when I don't have the camera in between me and the figure. So if you see me struggling with this, don't, don't, don't worry. You'll be all right. But uh, it will lay flat too if you give it a chance. Good stuff, though. Very big fan of this figure. I can't recommend them enough. If you do army build, you can pick up a few of these and you won't be sorry. You have enough options to actually uh, make them all look different, which is fantastic. Let's do a final size comparison. Here he is next to a modern G.I. Joe. As you can see, he's roughly about the same size, if not a tiny bit taller. Here he is next to a vintage G.I. Joe. As you can see, he's quite a bit taller than him. Um, he definitely fits in better with the modern size of 118th scale figures, the, the standard 4-inch that the market has taken now, um, than he does with the classic 3 and 3 quarter inch. Um, as I was saying a second ago, I can't recommend the figure enough. He's a great figure for your fantasy um, displays. Excellent accessories. Um, Great posability, um, just enough uh, mix and match parts to really make each one of the ones that you have unique. Uh, can't recommend them enough. If you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.